You've probably seen him by now. You might not have known that Israel Hanna is our younger brother. He's actually <laughs> younger than me and older than Caleb. He's right in between. You can tell if you put us all in a mugshot, but this powerful man of God, uh, we, we love him. We have uh, traveled with him. We continually speak with him as God gives him imperative messages mm -hmm. that, are, that are, are for now, and today is no different. I remember, Israel, just a short time ago, uh, before October 7th, we actually met you in Israel. You were on a mission trip in Israel, weren't you? And yeah. we just kind of joined together in Jerusalem, and God told you to get out of Jerusalem early before the war started, three days before the war started. You obeyed, and you yeah. uh, you skipped the war, didn't you? We didn't get that memo for some reason. Listen, I don't know if that's I on us. Listen, the, the message there is I obeyed, and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. No, God, no, God used you know, us there. It was awesome. We met, we, we met that night after a long day at midnight, and uh, mm. it was late and uh, past my bedtime, but it was a wonderful time we had. Every time we get together, the, the presence of the Lord is there. I really appreciate that. Hey, Amen. Well, this time we're talking about Josiah and the last Reformation. Uh, there's so many different stories. You can focus on Josiah and apply it to your life. God has recently given you, uh, from what I've heard, an object lesson with Josiah's life, and we'd like to hear about it today. Oh, yes, and it's important, I think, because, you know, we've just gone through the eclipse thing, and everybody thinks it's in a lot of ways it fizzled out. It wasn't what it was supposed to be, or they thought it was going to be. A lot of disappointment, maybe uh, it turned out to be like a dud, you could say, it to a lot of people. But on the other hand, the people that did see totali totality, that they said it was absolutely amazing. And so, um, but right from the beginning, Joshua and Caleb, you know, I didn't predict any of those things. I, I, t I told people the most important thing that this eclipse is reminding me of is when I was on the river in that place of called Cairo, Illinois, I had to make that decision. And that decision was whether I'm going to follow God and go his way or am I going to go the way that the, the specialists and the captains and the barge captains on the man-made canal or go man's way. That's still very important and relevant. We are in a time frame that we need to decide, each one of us individually, are we going to give ourselves fully to God or are we going to go our own way and do our own thing? And it's very important. And so this, uh, this whole process of this, you know, talking about Josiah is the basically the restoration of the temple. And each one of us, as intense as times are right now, in order to really fully follow God, there's parts of us uh, that need to actually be restored. And that's what Joshua, I mean, Josiah did as a young king who came into his uh, position of authority. Uh, he actually restored the temple uh, in a way that brought, you know, God back to Israel, back to the temple, restored the temple. And he did that uh, uh, by finding, he says, I got this written out, uh, Josiah found the book of the law. And as he cleansed the temple, he read that book. Now, I don't know if you've talked about this, but a lot of people believe that book that was lost, the lost book that he, Josh, Josiah read, was the, was the book of Deuteron Deuteronomy. Hmm. And Deuteronomy is the perfect thing to, um, it's the perfect message for the day. And that is, I have set before you this, uh, I have called heaven and earth to witness against you today. I place before you life and death, blessings or cursings. Therefore, choose life so that you and your children shall live. Love God, uh, your God who is listening. Uh, love him obediently and firmly embrace him as your father, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's what's happening in this world today. That very message I have set before you this day, we have the right to choose either life or death, blessings or cursings. And we need to do that because not only then will our temple be restored, but we will have the uh, uh, we'll be in sync with our heavenly Father, who is who lives within us. We become then the, the temple of God. We are the temple of God, and that's so important, as you know. But that's not a revelation to a lot of people. But you know what I'm saying? We are the temple mm -hmm. of God, and yet it's it's. Uh, 
it, the, the message here, uh, this is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do not you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? Uh, we can go down a little bit, uh, to, and then we go to John chapter uh, 17, verse 20 and 21. I pray that all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that you also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent us. Okay, now, when we talk about the, this gets a little in depth, I mean, I've never really heard anybody say what I'm about to say, of course, uh, but, okay, so when we talk about the Trinity, you know, a lot of people argue against the Trinity, God is one, God is one, that's a fact, but there mm -hmm. is a Trinity out there that exists, and I'll never forget, I told you before the revelation that I had on the Trinity, and uh, what I saw when I was asking the Lord about this back at my altar, um, years ago was I saw the Heavenly Father was, uh, was, was up in heaven and he was looking down and he was pointing to his son Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was looking down and he was pointing to the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit. Now from the bottom up the Holy Spirit was glorifying Jesus and then Jesus was looking up and glorifying his Father. Mm. They're three in one and it's a beautiful scenario of how God operates. The Father glorifies the Son, the Son glorifies and sends the Holy Spirit, the whole Holy Spirit glorifies the Son, and the Son glorifies the Father. And when they work together like that, the three become one, because it says, let them be one as you and I are one, Father. Now, when, I, when people argue against the Trinity, I said, you know, here's, a, here's my question for you if you're arguing about the Trinity. Jesus Christ makes this statement. I speak a great mystery unto you. When the two become one, when the two are joined, they become one. A man and a wife, two separate individuals, become one. That's a great mystery. So now if, if uh, two can become one, and it's a great mystery, why couldn't three, Father, Son, and Holy <laughs> Spirit? And then you add to that what he says here. Now listen, I pray that they all may be one. <laughs> now we're expanding the number a little bit. As yeah. you and I are one, Father, uh, because you are in me and I in you, that they also may be one with us. So uh, that's getting pretty big, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we can be one in Christ, but that includes all of us. Now, if all of us are in the body of Christ, then we the remnant I'm talking about that obeys God, accepts the Christ as their Savior and, and uh, you know, has been born again. That's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, but we then have fellowship with our brethren, our brothers and our sisters, because we are one with them. You know, when I walk with, beside by side with you guys, I walk as, as your brother, as your... You know, as I walk in step, I hope with love and yes. uh, just the the camaraderie and friendship and oneness we have in the spirit, to me is amazing. I don't have this with, unfortunately, with a lot of people, and I know you guys probably do because you're so popular. <laughs> <laughs> there are very few that we can share that same unity in the Holy Spirit as you, Israel. <laughs> well, thank you for saying that, but. <laughs> We can't, the Bible says, do not forsake the assemblings of yourselves together, mm -hmm. uh, even so much as the, uh, you know, the evil day approaches. So in these last days, which I think we are in, there's so much pressure and so much intensity that I, I crave fellowship like we're having right now with you and mm. with you and John, with, what we're having right here on this Zoom call. I crave it. I seek it out. I go to little prayer meetings or outside the walls of the church, or I go to church also. But it's hard to find uh, a group that we're, we're all in, not all in one accord with maybe what we even agree, but we're all in accord with the Spirit of God that's living and moving mm. within us. Doesn't that make sense? Well, it's, it's a very difficult time. Josh and I have taught about this on the Bearded Bible Brothers for the past five years that we are in this time of apostasy. All these churches have fallen away from the truth 
And and the church to them is the building. This big, yes. you know, five million dollar building that they've constructed. It's what they did with their own two hands. But that was never meant to be the church. When Yeshua said it is finished and, and the veil was written too, he meant for the church to go mobile. Now we are the church. And yes. as long, you know, when we come together in unity, we are having church, whether it's right here, we're, we're over the internet, or, or we're in yes. person. And so uh, that's why I find your message about Josiah so enlightening. It's simple, but it is deep, because most people don't understand that concept, that the Holy Spirit, we're one with him. We're yes. one with Messiah through the Holy Spirit right now. And that's where, why we should be restoring our lives with right. repentance, with obedience, with submission to God's word so that we can have those revivals, the, the reformation, and have this last day's move of God. Just think about that, Josh, uh, Caleb. The creator of the universe lives in us. How can we fear anything? How can mm. we, you know, he comes... Uh, I want my temple to be cleansed and and righteous, not in my own righteousness, but I want to. The temple needs also be holy. And people forget that aspect of it, because if it's not, you know, there's a time, there's a there's a time and place where we know that God would, would withdraw Himself. Now He always loves us, He accepts us, but you know, a, a sin still separates us from Him. You know, my, you you understand? It's it's nothing new. I'm telling you. Yes. But um, I want to get to the, uh, the to Trinity, okay? So now listen, let's listen to my what I think was my revelation. Okay, mm -hmm. you have the Trinity, you have the Father, okay, and I'm going to count these. Father, one, the Son, two, the Holy Spirit, three, you and I are four, it's the Holy Spirit in us, and then all of us, that's five, you know, all of us put together that are part of the remnant in him. That's five different, okay, uh, that's five different elements that are joined together and can be one according to God's word. Okay, so we make that analogy with the temple. Now, and the Trinity, God living in us because we are that temple. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the temples for a minute. Okay, let's, let's count and think about the temples. The mm -hmm. first temple was a tent in the wilderness in Shiloh. Yep. followed by a cloud by a pillar a cloud by day and a, and a pillar of fire by night so it was meant to to move uh, as god moved to follow mm. the cloud follow the fire follow the you know and as god moved that tent was movable and that's who we are we're living in a tent that's not stagnant it's it's not a tent with it's it's a it's a bit tent without walls it's a tent okay so then you have the second temple I mean the first temple that was built that temple is defiled as we want then we get to come to the third temple and that uh, they rebuild the temple and that temple is destroyed on the same day 450 days well, years later whatever uh, on the same day uh, Tishbiav and then that, so that's the that's the third temple then we have us as the the the, the fourth temple okay we are the temple today now there's another temple coming, and that's the that's the one that uh, they build and the uh, Antichrist defiles. So that's the yeah. fifth. That's the fifth. Okay. Now that's the fifth temple. Now that last temple is 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 defiled, and okay, let's go through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all of us. Mm -hmm. We we're the fifth in that line of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. We're actually the fifth temple, but that includes all of us. But our temple, your temple, if you're part of the remnant, is under siege. It's under attack, and the mm -hmm. enemy wants to destroy it and defile it. That's not a coincidence right now. Yes, you've mentioned the intensity of the times. Okay, mm -hmm. now if we look at the fifth temple, the fifth temple is also destroyed, mm -hmm. and then uh, the Antichrist defiles it. Okay? Now, our temple, what God wants to do in the spiritual realm is also sometimes often preceded in the physical realm. So there are people, Joshua and Caleb, that are saying that they've got these vaccinations now that have the ability through COVID and other things, the shots that were taken, to alter our DNA, yeah. to defile our temple to that mm. degree. And it's been done, and it is being done. 
they've come up with a way that they can actually change who we are inside and defile us mm -hmm. at this point in time. Now, that's no coincidence that at the same time we're talking about the fifth temple that they're going to be, you know, the Antichrist sets up that, no, that's also defiled. Yes. And the bottom line in this is we have to be aware of what's happening around us, that we don't give in, that we, that, you know, Joshua and Caleb, I think a lot of times in the body of Christ, discernment, actual discernment is hard to find. People that actually discern God's voice and walk with him daily and are not deceived because the truth is like finding a needle in a haystack on any of this. Mm -hmm. But if you want to go to the truth, of course, we go to God's word, you know, and that, that's he reveals that to us. But then again, the Holy Spirit is my teacher and my guide and your guide also, and our guide. Uh, so all of this is very, very important. Uh, I was thinking about, when I was thinking about this, I was, I, the temple, of, you know, God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit live within me, in me. And I thought, Wow, man, I really feel bad for him. They live in me. <laughs> because I'm in a lot of pain, man. Constantly. Oh. I met this guy in Walmart, a little story time, the other day. I had to go for a creamer at 7 o'clock in the morning. There's nobody at Walmart. But we can't drink our coffee without creamer. We had to have an emergency. So I'm there, and I meet this guy. He's, I talk to everybody. He's 90 years yeah. old. Wow. And I go, well, how are you today, sir? Well, I'm doing good. Well, can I ask you a question? Well, how old are you? And the guy looks at me. And he, he's look, he's great. He says, son, I want you to know I'm 90 years old. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, I'm only 77. And what are you going to think of that? Look at me. And I said, well, sir, I am only 77. And he looks at me and he takes a step back and he goes, my God, what happened to you, man? <laughs> Uh, thanks. Yes, thank you, sir. My ego. So oh. our temples are corruptible in the sense with age yeah. and things. But the spirit of the Lord lives in us. He's not done with us yet. If you're aging out there and you're listening to this, God bless you, my friends. God loves you. He wants. I want. He wants. I was reading the other day and I, I, pray, I was in prayer and I got this. I know I'm rambling here, but I want to say this to our audience, my friends. God wants to put on you uh, wants to put a smile on your face a twinkle in your eyes and a bounce in your step he wants to refresh you because you are his living temple you are the temple of a living god and uh it's important that uh the, the scripture for in, in psalms 81 today was one of my favorite psalms uh, uh well one of my favorite statements actually uh, in Psalms 81, it says, I have rescued you from Egypt, therefore open your mouth and I will fill it. My friends, if you're listening today, God has rescued you. He has changed your life. He lives within you. You have a lot to share with other people. Open your mouth. Do not be shy. Open your mouth. And out of that will flow the good things of God. Tell them how God has rescued you and how much he means to you and be a blessing like Joshua and Caleb are. Ezra, that's amazing. Uh, everything that you said is so interesting because I've talked with people for years and years um, about an all-encompassing idea of your body being the temple. It being a spiritual responsibility and it being a physical responsibility. And a lot of times we get caught up in life with this legalistic idea that God's given yes. us this set of rules to control us and this and that. And yet you look and you realize that everything he's asked for you to do is a beneficial term to have your body, your temple functioning in its optimal design. Right? Yes. He says, yes. eat this way, and your body functions optimally in this way. You have yes. energy. You, you, you have yes. good sleep. You have all this stuff. You feed your spirit this way, and optimally your spirit functions in this way. And when yes. we look at all the attack and the plans of the enemy, I was, I was talking with a naturopathic, naturopathic doctor a few days ago who was explaining the insidious plot um, in America over all these years to cripple our health 
in the things that they have legalized in our food yes. and the way it's processed yes. and this and that. You talk about um, these vaccinations that are here to mutate our DNA and to change it. And then you look at our entertainment and everything that they are feeding us in our spirit man. And it's meant to cripple and to desynthesize and to introduce in these spiritual toxins into our life. Mm. And so when I was talking to my friend, I said, you know, it's really easy to be in this position when you find these giftings in your life. Maybe you're, you're a little smarter than somebody else. Maybe you have better insight. And you say, this is, this is an excuse for me to sit back because I already know this and do less. And yet the Bible yes. says, to whom much is given, much is required. There is yes. a greater responsibility yes. in a discipline that's placed on us because we are the body, the temple of him. Yes. He's residing in us. And I think that we have, we have gotten in this, this poor pattern that, this, that our lives were meant to be entertained and that the only thing that we seek out is is pleasing that in the moment, and then we fulfill our requirements on Sundays and Wednesdays to say we love you, Jesus, and then we yes. go back to a week of surviving and entertaining. Yeah, and Josiah exactly. is this amazing representation of what man one man can do to change an entire nation. Yes, what you're saying now is that God loves us, and everything that we're saying, it's not a judgment, it's not an attack. If, if you're eating poorly, turn your eating around. <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you're putting things into your spirit... Why is it bad? You say, oh, this show isn't that bad. Well, because it's very, very clear. If God can't co cohabitate with sin, then your father, when you put that into your life, you're going like this and pushing him away. And it's just exactly. how it is. Yes. We don't want to take that responsibility. So today right. is the day to take the responsibility. I remember you know, our trip, like we said, we met up with you. And then on October 7th, on that day where I was speaking in front yeah. of the mosque, and I said, today people are going to lose their lives and be eternally separated. And over 1,200 yeah. people died that day shortly after exactly. I said that. Yeah. We don't know. We don't have promise tomorrow. Today is the day to choose at that fork in the river, at that fork in the road. Are you going to go with your logic? If you're going to go with your flesh, or are you going to go on what God's called you to do? And even if you think you don't know, it takes one step forward to make the progress in the right direction. And then the faith in him to take every step afterwards, and that's what he wants for us. So that's perfect, Joshua and Caleb. Um, you know, I was thinking about our uh, last podcast that we got with a lot of hits on that about the Mississippi River. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys get that many constantly, but it was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty impressive. But one of the things that I saw a lot of comments on was the fact that we actually had communion you know, people yeah. appreciated us having communion out there because nobody does that. It's overlooked. Now, uh, I would like to, I know you may not be prepared for this, but I brought the communion again because uh, you don't you don't have to, you got it there or something. You got anything ready that you could use for communion? Uh, hold on. I'm going to okay. grab something. I'm going to surprise you on this one. Right here. But maybe. Okay, one of you guys can grab that and we'll uh, we'll talk, Joshua. I'm going to have to get a I'm going to have to get a communal fanny pack just to carry around with the, with the <laughs> elements in it. So I actually we have, have uh, potato chips that All might right. work, and we have water. So oh, that's perfect. The, the, here, so. Right here, if you think we're legalistic, we're off <laughs> off brand Pringles and spring water. Still, it's about the heart. So. <laughs> God knows our hearts, my brother. You got it. Uh, and so there you go. But it's important, uh, Joshua, that we yes. uh, and Caleb, that we do this. It's overlooked in the in the, in the church actually, and that's important because the uh, the early church, the Book of Acts, took, communed with God every day and took communion every every single day because mm -hmm. He's the Lord says, "Do this in remembrance of Me." And I gave you that illustration about the sliver, you know, the other day. My son actually heard that, and he said, wow, that's pretty good. You know, <laughs> if you have a sliver in your hand, and you leave it there for a couple of weeks or a year, it's going to be a kind of, kind of a problem. But if you take that sliver out the moment you get it, uh, and you ask for forgiveness for your sins, that's a, that sliver can be an indication of your sins. And if you leave that sin in your life, and it festers, and it becomes angry and unforgiving, it separates you eventually. It causes you a lot of pain. And so taking communion as we examine ourselves helps us to start daily afresh every day. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for uh, the bread, uh, whatever, that this bread that we've got today, uh, this unleavened bread, uh, speaks that you are the bread of life. You are the bread of life. And because your body was broken for us, Lord, we remember that by your stripes are that we are healed. 
we are set free, we are forgiven, and we have eternal life. So we thank you for this bread, and we take it now in Yeshua's name. Amen. I hope some of you listeners are hearing this, <clears throat> hearing this message <clears throat> about the importance of communion, and maybe even join us here. Uh, you got some time. That uh, this is a very um, it's something God commanded us to do, and when we do it, I know it's the, the it's important because the Lord actually told me, Joshua, five years ago, to, the remnant will carry the 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 blood and the, the you know the bread and the wine with them and minister that as they pray and go wherever mm-hmm. they go. So I've been doing that for five years. Uh, I think I've given out 5,000 communion cups all over. Wow. But we thank you, Lord, for the blood, the most powerful weapon on earth. Man talks about their weapons, but this is the greatest weapon in the universe, the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This blood was shed for our salvation, for for the forgiveness of our sins. And today we do thank you for that and do this in remembrance of you. In Yeshua's name, amen. You know, I was brought up in the Catholic Church, and, you know, there's a formality of that, but God is not, I'm glad to hear you guys say, God is not a legalist in that. God knows our hearts. Yes. And what we are doing here, I think, is a representation of Mm. what all of us need to do more often. I thank you so much for joining me. Amen. Thank you, Israel, for joining us today and giving us those insights on Josiah. We appreciate it. I know we're going to join together again in the future sometime soon. Hopefully, hopefully we'll meet in Israel. 